right. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to today's uh, weekly halakha. Today, the topic I want to focus on is on the importance and power of connecting to truth and how it, so crucial it is for us to constantly reassess our connection to truth in general, right? And how the disconnect from truth leads to a lot of problems. It leads to a disconnect from ourself. It leads to a disconnect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from our creator. It leads to a scattered feeling, a lack of grounding, right? You feel like you're like a leaf in the wind, just going in whatever direction something takes you. Someone says, this is true today, you go with it. Someone says, this is popular today, you go with it. Tomorrow, it's not popular, you you leave it alone, right? And, and so there's a huge disconnect from truth that, that I feel we are facing today because we're inundated with a lot of information where, you know, our values are not organized in the right way. And we don't take the time to assess these things. We don't take the time to assess what, what are my truths? What values do I uphold? What values do I, do I abide by? Right. What are my core beliefs? What are my core uh, truths? So, and what we miss as Muslims often is that when we think of Islam, we, we forget that the essence of Islam, the essence of the message of Islam is to send us truth. That everything is about allowing us to live in truth because what's the opposite of that? Falsehood. So when you live in falsehood, it's an illusion. Can you benefit from something that's not real? No. Can illu illusion can misguide you and lead, it's like a mirage. I always compare it to a mirage, right? Like a person in the desert sees an image. They think it's an o oasis. They think it's water. They think it's gonna quench their thirst. So what do they do? They keep running after it. Oh, that's gonna quench my thirst, right? But it's an illusion. It's not real. And when they get there, they're more dehydrated. That perceived image of what they thought was a benefit to them did not offer them anything. And they spent the whole way there, right? Losing their resources, losing their energy, losing everything. Like they, they, they're, they're, they're not gaining in the process. By the time they get there, they're, they're drained, they're tired, they're exhausted, right? They don't have the capacity to run anymore. And then on top of that, they're heartbroken. They're disappointed. And that lack of nourishment that they wanted so desperately to receive, they didn't get. This is the cost of being aligned with what is false, of illusion, and uh, the cost of being disconnected from truth. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, do not be like those who forgot Allah, they made them forget themselves. It's that when you forget the truths that Allah has told you about, you forget what you need. Because illusion has nothing to offer you. Falsehood has nothing to offer you. A lie has nothing to offer you. Can you benefit from a lie? You can, right? What do they say about the truth? The truth will set you free, right? What do people say about lies? It traps you. It imprisons you. So if you look at the message of Islam, you know, a lot of us look at it as, okay, it's like a set of rules. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow. No, it, it came down to send you, send you truth from the truth who has named himself the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his names is Al-Haq, which is the truth, right? The source of truth. And so Allah himself is truth and everything he sent is truth and he is truthful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this in the Quran, right? Allah says that, you know, several, several verses in the Quran, Allah tells you that he speaks the truth, that he's, that this is his truth, that his promise is true, right? So verse, uh, chapter three, verse 95, Allah speaks the truth. Chapter 33, verse four, and Allah speaks the truth and he shows you the way. Chapter 38, verse 84, Allah said, this is the truth, and I speak only the truth. Chapter 10, verse 55, surely Allah's promise is true. Chapter 4, verse 122, it is Allah's promise in truth, and who is more truthful in word than Allah? And I want you to think about this, right? Does Allah need to tell you that he's speaking the truth? Allah wouldn't lie, right? <laughs> he's the most perfect, right? He's the greatest. So why would he, why would he take the time to tell us? You know, I speak the truth. Can you imagine like a parent going to their child and saying like, listen, I'm not lying to you. I'm, I'm speaking the truth. A parent does that out of what? Love, right? It's like, well, trust me, trust me. I have your best interest at heart, right? 
And when two people are in a loving relationship, what is that relationship founded on upon? Trust. trust. They want to trust that the person they love speaks the truth, that what they claim is true, that when they make a promise, it is true. What does Allah, what was the last verse I said? It is Allah's promise in truth. Or the other verse, surely Allah's promise is true. Why does Allah give us several verses in which he confirms that what he has, that he is the truth, that what he has sent down is true, that he is the truthful, that everything he has sent is truth, right? In Surah Al-Zumar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we, verily, we sent down to you the book for mankind in truth. So whoever accepts the guidance, it is only for his own self. And whoever goes astray, he goes astray for his own loss. And you, and this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are not a wakil over them or a trustee or disposer of affairs over them. Meaning we sent them, we sent them the truth. You're not responsible for those who go are misguided. So here again, a constant affirmation. Allah tells us everything he sent down is truth. We sent down the Quran with truth and with the truth is it has come down and we have sent you Except as a bring, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again. We have sent you, o, you know, O Muhammad in parentheses, except as a bringer of good tidings and a warning, right? And unto you have we revealed the scripture with the truth, confirming whatever scripture was before it and a watcher over it. We have brought you the truth, but most of you despise it. The truth is heavy. It is a heavy thing, right? It falls heavy on the heart sometimes but it's the, it's the thing we know we need in life, right? It's very heavy for a person to say, hey, I lied, that this is the truth, right? It's very heavy sometimes for someone to say, to face the truth rather than hide from the truth. It's heavy to confront yourself. It's heavy to face the truth of your own actions, right? Truth is heavy. It's not, it's not something light, but it's the most valuable thing we have because without it, you're misguided. Right? What do they say? What, is, what do they often equate truth with, with in this world? Light. Truth lights the way. Have you guys heard that before? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran about someone he guides? He brings them out of darkness into light. So truth isn't just, oh, okay, thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be Muslim. Okay, list of abu. No, it's that you have truth. You have a guide in which to view your, your path in this world, a guide in which to live in the most elevated state. You know, in, in the new age spirituality now and the self-help stuff out there, they talk about this concept of the elevated self, right? Vibrate higher, they say, you know, like, you know, it, you know, give off higher vibrations in the world. That's this elevated self they're talking about is a self that is freed from the ego, freed from the nafs, living in truth. It's being a Muslim, right? And so, you know, even in, 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 in his creation of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Allah created the heavens and the earth with truth. Think about this. Like all of these verses, Allah's telling us, he sent this down with truth. He created the heavens and the earth with truth. Like truth is such an emphasis throughout the Quran. We often miss this. And it is he who created the heavens and the earth with truth. And when he says be, it is, his word is the truth. Again, an affirmation of what I'm telling you is real. Wake up. This is the truth. All these things around you, illusion, right? All these things around you, like perceived realities. And so he sent truth to guide, right? And there are many verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes this in the Quran you know, we have revealed to you the book with truth and with the truth, we have revealed it. And with the truth, did it come? It is, um, you know, Allah speaks to Prophet Muhammad saying, surely you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you, surely you are on the plain truth. So, so many, so many verses. This is a powerful one too. Chapter 10, verse 32. Such then is Allah, your true Lord. And what is there after the truth, but error? Meaning if you abandon truth, what do you have left but error, but falsehood? Allah judges with the truth, another thing, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us he will gather us together. You know, chapter 40, verse 78, say, our Lord will gather us together. Then he will judge between us with truth. So when Allah commands, when Allah's command comes, judgment is given with the truth, right? 
We all want to be judged truthfully. We all want justice, right? So, and the other thing that we miss is that truth will always prevail over falsehood. In chapter 17, verse 81, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the truth has come and falsehood has vanished. What happens when, when light enters? Can darkness exist? No, right? It can't. If you think about light, right? Darkness is the, is the experience or the state that exists only when light is not there. So interesting, think about this, right? Remember before we said that Allah compares light to what guidance? In the Quran, it, it brings them out, out of uh, from darkness into light, right? Here Allah says the truth has come and falsehood vanished. So if we equate truth with light and falsehood with darkness, when, when the sun rises, that's it, you don't see darkness because light exists. Darkness can only, darkness vanishes the second there's light. It cannot exist in the presence of light. That's how powerful light is. That's how powerful guidance is, right? And so here it's interesting, even the wording, very straightforward. The truth has come, falsehood has vanished. Once truth is present, once you ground yourself in truth, you can't be both, <laughs> right? You can't be truthful and false. You can't speak the truth and, and say a lie in the same sentence. You can't, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, nay, we hurl the truth against falsehood. Another thing. So this is another verse. We hurl the truth against falsehood, meaning like it's there to, to it's basically the enemy of falsehood, right? It's there against it. So it knocks out its brain and lo, it vanishes. So just to emphasize, I wanted to start off with this to give you this emphasis on how important truth is in our faith, that everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is to connect us to truth so that we may benefit from truth, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that if the truth, so what, what's happening nowadays is that one of the, also the, the concepts that we have to understand is that we cannot bend the truth to our desire, right? And this is what's happening nowadays. People are saying, you know, trying to bend the truth to accommodate what? Their desires, to accommodate their egos, to accommodate their nafs, to accommodate what they want, what their comfort is. And, they, and they'll go to the extent of changing what is true to accommodate the, me, myself, and I, to accommodate what they want, right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is, this is um, you know, in a verse in the Quran, chapter 23, verse 71, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if the truth follows their desire, the heavens and the earth and the earth and all those who are therein would perish. So truth cannot bend to our desire. Truth is truth. It's constant. Truth does not change to accommodate our desires. It does, it does not accommodate falsehood. It does not uh, change because we're ignorant or we're unaware of it. Truth is truth. And, you know, there's a quote that I really love by W. Clement Stone. He says that the truth will always be the truth, regardless of lack of understanding, disbelief, or ignorance. And so we're required as Muslims to seek the truth, right? This is why obligation, uh, knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim, right? As Prophet Muhammad taught us, that seeking knowledge is what? Seeking truth. And that's why it's an obligation. Because truth is what unveils the heart from seeing what it needs to see. Your eyes can see one thing, but your heart has a different reality. It knows, no, no, no. I don't care how, how, how popular this thing is. My heart is telling me this isn't right. You know, the truth has a different kind of sight. And so it's really important to focus on this because there's so many of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's truths that we're disconnected from which is going to lead me to my talk about even being connected to your own truths, right? And how important it is for your spiritual, mental, and emotional health. But first, I just want to talk, just re-emphasize this, you know, as quickly as possible. So many truths that we're disconnected from that affect us, that affect our ability to be freer, to be sincere, to feel lighter in this world, to not carry as much, to um, not be as scattered, right? To be hopeful, which is such an important, you know, experience to have, such an important emotion, such an important value to have, to have hope that what you're going through is not the end, that Allah has something in store for you. This all goes back to a disconnect from Allah's truth. 
you know, and we need to constantly remind ourselves of this. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu would remind himself of this when he would wake up for tahajjud. There's a beautiful long da. I encourage you to, to really look it up, and in, in which Allah, in which the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi would affirm all the truths of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You are the truth. Your the, your book is true. Your angels are true. Your message is true. Right? Heaven is true. Hell is true. C- confirming all the realities that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has taught us. It's such a beautiful da. And he would say this, this is the Prophet ﷺ himself, who is more connected to those realities than any of us. And yet he reminds himself of the truths. And people do this today, by the way, affirmations. People are constantly affirming their truths. I speak my truth. This is my truth. I can only, this is just my truth. You know, like, this is like the thing nowadays, right? Like, which is a good thing. I'm not saying, I'm just sometimes I feel like we, we, over, we overdo it in the sense where we actually negate are we don't we apply it to certain areas and don't apply it to other areas and this is why i'm saying it that way because we apply it to our own selves and our nafs but sometimes we forget like am i affirming allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's truths am i affirming my belief in his in his truths and so so many things we're disconnected from allah's promises remember i, I repeated those verses for you first so that you can first know that it is allah who, who said it right that his promises are true but throughout the quran allah tells you those promises Allah tells you those rewards for those who struggle, for those who persevere, for those, right? For any type of hardship you go through, there are rewards, there are promises. Nothing you go through is without meaning in this world, right? And yet we're disconnected from that. And so Allah's promises are true. How connected are we to that? His love for us are true is true. How connected are we to that? Last week, we talked about the verse in Surah Taha where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Surah Musa as he recounts his favors upon him, he says, right? And I have bestowed upon you love for me. And we said, how many of us? And, and then the end of that verse, right? That, so that you may be molded or shaped under my eye. And we said, how many of us think of Allah's love for us? Not, not read that verse as if, Allah speaking to Musa alayhi salam, but read that verse of Allah speaking to us, to my heart. When we're going through hardship, how many of us look at it as Allah's telling me that he has, as I'm going through this struggle, as I'm going through this hardship, that Allah has bestowed his love upon me so that I also am being molded through him, not through the creation, not through the world, not through society, right? How many of us think, have that intimate, personal, individual connection with the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So, his promises are true. His love for us is true. His mercy towards us is true. We affirm that every time we start a chapter in the Quran, every time we stand in prayer, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the most compassionate, the most merciful. We affirm that, right? His closeness to us is true. Allah says He's closer to us than our own jugular vein. You know, this main vein that pumps blood into our hearts that without it, we would not be alive, right? Allah says He's closer to us than that. His power is true. The hereafter is true. This isn't your only reality. We talked about this a little bit last time, right? But this isn't your only reality. And if you make it your only reality, if you look at this as this, this is your permanent station, everything becomes exacerbated. Your struggles become exacerbated. The emotions you feel about things are becoming exacerbated it, because this is it. This is it. This is my only reality, right? There's nothing after this. This has no meaning in a different time. So it becomes heightened. His, the unseen is true. His rewards are true. His punishments are true. Our meeting with him is true. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, um, constantly affirms these truths and realities for us in the Quran so that we may stay grounded. So we, not, we're, we do not become like that person I mentioned earlier who's chasing a mirage, chasing an illusion. This is what's happening for a lot of people. Oh, that has value for me. Oh, that has value for me. Oh, this is good. I need to do this. I need to hop on that wagon. I need to do this because everybody else is doing it. I need... And at the end, we have a pandemic of people not feeling nourished, feeling burned out, feeling sadder than ever. It's, it's on the rise, yet we have more resources, <laughs> right? We have more things available. We have more comforts. And so it's, what is it showing you? is that the truth and the value of things are missing. What is really truthful, what is really valuable, because that's what truth is, it's what's valuable. It's what helps you. It's what's good for you, right? And so this 
every phase in our life, where whether it's we're going through blessings, we're going through struggles, it's always a time to reassess our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's truths. And remember that our disconnect from those truths leads to a disconnect from our own truths. And it's also important for us to be connected to our truths, right? You know, Fyodor, uh, I always mess up his name, Dostoevsky, uh, a Russian author, he says, above all, don't lie to yourself. The man who lies to himself and listens to his own lie comes to a point that he cannot distinguish the truth within him or around him. And so loses all respect for himself and for others. And having no respect, he ceases to love. I'm going to read that again. Okay. And if you got distracted, you know, bring yourself back to the here and now to the present. I want you to really, you know, be present with this. It's such a powerful quote. It says, above all, do not lie to yourself. The man who lies to himself and listens to his own lie comes to a point that he can't distinguish what is true within him or around him. And so he loses respect for himself and having no respect, he ceases to love. He, his capability to love others becomes reduced. What does, how does that resonate in your heart? What meaning can you, can, does, what comes up for you in your heart when you hear that? Just any, anything as you were listening to that. I mean, I read it twice, guys. <laughs> hmm? Dictators, okay. People that hurt other people, they lose. Sorry. Oh, wow. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. When you say that, I don't just think of dictators. I think of tyrants, narcissists, right? Narciss narcissists in relationships, narcissists in the home, tyrants in the home, right? In, in workplaces and, you know, and on a bigger scale, right? And, and that part where you said where people around them don't understand why they're doing that right very good anybody else well the m yeah i just want to say i don't understand the connection between the first part and jumping to love it's yeah love. so there's in this quote he's saying that the person who lies to themselves begins like basically a person who does not face the truth and lies to themselves begins to even get confused about what is true within them and what is not. So like, if you think about, you know, a lot of times people are just like going with the motions. Oh, I'll make this choice. I'll make that choice. I'll post this. I'll do this. I'll, you know what I mean? Like I'll, they're not connected to what is true. Like, what is my intention? Why am I doing this? Well, you know, it's like very just on the go. Like I said, I always use that expression of leaf in the wind because you just feel like you're like, you know, but in this quote, it's equating, he's equating that a person who cannot, who continues to lie to themselves, begins to even not know what is true within them. And when they do that, when they become confused about the truth within them, they lose respect for themselves. People lose respect for them. And when you don't have respect for yourself, you can't have love. Because the found love has to have respect. You can't love, you can't claim to love someone, for example, and then disrespect them. That wouldn't be that would be a sign that you actually don't love them because love has to come with respect. So it's interesting. He's equating um, that when a man does not respect them himself, he 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 loses his capability to love because he loses his ability to love himself. Right. I also thought of like it's, it's so much easier to lie to ourselves too. Mm -hmm. So I think also like it takes a strength and courage. Absolutely. Like a level of self awareness to be true. Absolutely. Like yeah. So it does start. I feel like it does start with you. Like yeah but it's hard. <laughs> yeah no i love that you said courage because it's remember in the beginning i was saying that truth is heavy right it, it falls heavy on the heart it takes courage to face your own truths because a lot of truth is not always pretty right it's that oh i need to fix this i need to work on this i i need to say apologize for this i need to own this mistake or i need to change what am i doing wrong what am i why does the cycle keep repeating right a lot of you know facing truth is not something that's easy but it's even the acceptance of faith and the acceptance of deen, the, the statement of ashhadu anna la ilaha illallah, right? It's, it's the most beautiful statement. It's the most beautiful belief, but that truth is heavy on the heart for the believer, right? It's because now it comes with a responsibility. So 
there's a very strong connection here to like our ability to prioritize truth in our lives and the respect we have for ourselves, the respect we have for others, the love we have for ourselves, the love we have for others. And so we always need to ask how connected I am to Allah's truths, how connected I am to the truth behind the things that I do. You know, and this is why intentions, we know from our deen and amalu bin niyat, as Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has taught us, right? That our actions, barely are, your actions are by your intentions. Because when you connect to your intention, you have to connect to the why. You have to connect to the truth. You know why you're doing this. You're not, again, a leaf in the wind, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that in um, chapter 5, verse 119, Allah will say oh, on the day of judgment, this is a day when the truthful will benefit from their truthfulness. So it, again, we said this message came down to give us the truth, right? So that we may benefit from the truth, so that we may live in truth and benefit from living from truth, which is what we call authenticity, right? Authentic living is when you're living in line with what you claim to be true. When you say, these are my values, these are my truth, these are my beliefs, are you living in line with that? That's what authenticity is. And the opposite of that is hypocrisy, when you're not living in line with those truths. And so, so the, from the beginning, remember we said the verses of Allah created you with truth, right? I mean, Allah, crea Allah created with truth. So, and we said that like everything that Allah has sent down is the truth. He's the truth. His message is true. His promises are true. Now Allah is bringing you to the day of judgment, right? Now he's bringing you to the, the end of this worldly life where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah will say, this is a day when the truthful will benefit from their truthfulness. So you took this message. You own this message, you valued this message, you understood that it's the truth, you claim that it's the truth, you lived by the truth. Now this is the day in which the truthful will benefit from their truthfulness. They will have gardens graced with flowing streams, there to remain forever. Allah is pleased with them and they with him. Right, that is the supreme triumph. So the ones who end up having this triumph, this success, are those what? Are the truthful who benefited from their truthfulness. And the reality is, is that we miss out of so much benefit when we're not truthful, when we're not aligned with truth, you know, and this is what I'm seeing, you know, happening a lot for, for, for people, especially when they're going through struggling times, it's that what's false and true is not clear. And that's why I really like love the therapeutic process because it's where a client can come in and lay out all their pieces, right. And say, okay, this is what I've been carrying. These are all the pieces that I have in front of me that are contributing to my struggle, that are contributing to what I'm feeling. And then we could look at each piece and say, well, is that really aligned with your values? Is that really aligned with the truth of who you are, the truth of your beliefs, the truth of your claims? And you could unlearn and unpack things that no longer belong to you. So that when you, you know, and that's the, remember we talked about hardships, right? We talked about the hardships come to give you, to show you up. Last week, we talked about this. Hardships come to show you the truth, right? And so when you're going through struggle and you're going, when Allah tests you, it has such a, um, a refining process to it where you are, he's creating a process for you to see the truth of him, the truth of who you are, the truth of how you've been living your life, right? And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are the truthful, who will benefit from our truthfulness on the day we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we emphasize that truth is important, right? So what does it mean to connect to our truth? To realize what is guiding us, to evaluate if our truths are in line with Allah's truths, because we already claimed it, right? We say we're Muslim, that means we claimed ashadu anna la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, right? We bear, we, we bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. We, we, we aligned ourselves with his truths, right? And so we have to evaluate if our truths are in line with our creator's truths. And trust me, people are doing this already. They're aligning themselves with other people's truths, with different, different truths, right? It's just a matter of saying, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to align myself with my creator's truth, right? Everyone has a God. Everyone has something that they view as their highest value. As Muslims, what we say though, is we choose, we know, we acknowledge the reality that there's nothing greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? There's nothing, there's no one more worthy of worshiping or placing in that, in that, on that, on that value. That's what shirk is. You place something at the same pedestal as Allah, the same value as Allah, right? And so purpose of when we connect to our truth, we evaluate if our truths are in line with Allah's. 
We identify our strengths, our goals. We, we assess, you know, if we're speaking truthfully, when we communicate with others, we assess what our intentions are behind the actions that we're doing. Right. And there's so many perp there, there's so many benefits to connecting to our truths because it helps us strive to our potential. It helps us, you know, be molded through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not through creation, the world, you know, different messages that don't serve us. Um, purpose of connecting to truth is that it empowers true self-expression, that when you speak, you speak truthfully. And when you speak, you speak with value. You're not just like speaking to, you know fill the time you're not speaking to make yourself your ego feel good to hear the sound of your voice right you're not you're not listening to people just so you can respond and show that you you know what i mean like when you really prioritize truth everything becomes is this true what i'm about to say is it a value is it beneficial is it helpful you're more grounded allows you to experience greater sacred self love right a love that you have towards yourself through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is rooted in your relationship with him that allows you to love others also for his sake and want for them what you love for yourself. It allows you to live a life that is balanced, that is centered, that is purposeful. It allows you to cultivate a more present life because when you value truth, you're always assessing what is real. And there's no more, there's no more, there's no, there's, the present is the realest moment, I guess. That's what I want to say, right? Like it's, it's the greatest reality in front of you. The future is not a reality yet. The past is no longer a reality right now, right? So when you prioritize truth, you prioritize the reality in front of you. And this is what allows you to feel more whole, enough, and empowered. So what, what does connecting to our truth require? It requires, number one, a mindset that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the destination. I'm not the destination of myself, right? I understand that Allah has named himself al-Haq. He's the one who is the source of all the truth. So I'm not going to claim that I'm the destination of myself. I'm not going to claim that I am the master of myself. I'm not going to claim that I know all the truth. I'm not going to claim that I know best, right? So when you are on this journey, when you prioritize truth and you prioritize authenticity, you cannot make yourself the destination. This is where narcissism breeds. This is where egos become the lead. This is where, you know, you actually suffer because you are not meant, you are not designed to be the master of yourself. You're not designed to bear the burden of being the source and know it all of all your problems and all your solutions. That's not how you were designed. And in fact, the burden we place on our mind at times is because we are putting that burden on ourselves. You need to know, you don't have an answer for this. No, no, think again, think again, think again, right? We make this our God. But in prayer, essentially Allah is teaching us, no, 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 put this to the ground. This isn't your God, right? This isn't, this isn't the, the, you know, the, the end of be it all, right? This isn't like the, the source, the master of yourself. This is a tool. And we humble it every day in Salah, in every rakah, right? You stand, but at the end you humble it. You say, no, you know better, ya Allah. And so connection to our truth requires that we do not make ourselves the destination. This is a huge mistake that people make when they're on the journey of self-help and, you know, and, and I mean, on the journey of self-improvement and, and, and break, um, absorbing all the self-help stuff out there is that a lot of it speaks to us making ourselves the master, speak out, making ourselves the God. And there's so many messages like this. I see like through movies and shows and, and books, I, I, you know, over the years I've immerse myself in, you know, hundreds of self-help books and looking at them through like an Islamic psychological framework. And one of the things, especially the talk about self-love, like it was very, I, I had a very um, like cringy feeling at times when reading, because it made it about you being, you know, you have every, you, you know, you have everything you, you're the source of everything. You're the master. No, we're not. <laughs> You know, even loving myself, I need to go and access the source of all love, which is Al-Wadud, right? Who has named himself the creator of love. So even to love myself and to love others, I need to go access the infinite resource, infinite supply, right? That Allah subhanahu wa has for us. Connection to truth requires courage. So back to your point, right? It requires courage to face our truths. If facing your truth is hard, it, it requires that you build the muscle to do so. It's not easy, but the cost of not facing your truth is so much worse than the temporary pain you're going to feel facing your truth, facing your mistake, facing where you need to grow, right? 
connection to our truth requires that we hold our egos accountable. You know, we hold our nafs accountable. This thing that I, this action that I just did, that I said, oh, I did it so sincerely. Really? Like when we say I did this or I want this, which I are you talking about? Are you talking about, the, you know, your nafs? Are you talking about your heart that seeks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it, are you are you talking about the part of you that just wants comfort and and pleasure and 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 um, constant like um, self significance, or are you talking about no? I I know this is from a place where I care about Allah seeing me, right? And a strong desire and drive to be free, to grow, to self actualize, right? To to transcend your limitations to transcend, you know, living from that place of the nafs where it's always about your comfort, you know, because then you don't get to experience the sweetness of, 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 you know, like in Ramadan, what is that, right? Why do we feel so free and so much lighter is because we're actually going against our nafs, right? We're going against constantly feeding our constant comfort. And so we experience this elevation that I talked about earlier, right? Where you get to live from that elevated self. And so connecting to our truth it requires self-awareness. And so to have that self-awareness, we need to build the muscle of connecting to a few things. Number one, our core beliefs. You know, what we believe is true. You know, as a psychologist, you know, what we look at with clients is what are the core beliefs that are driving them constantly, right? What are the core beliefs behind their habits, their actions, their destruct, especially the destructive habits, right? Especially the negative reactions to things. What is, what is the, what do they believe is true about Allah, about themselves, about the world that causes them to react that way? And so we break that apart, right? And so knowing our core beliefs, what we believe is true about Allah, about others, humanity, about our tests and struggles. Do you believe that your test and struggle is there to give you something or is it there to punish you? That's a, that, that itself alone could make or break a person, right? What, what, how do you, what do you, what are your beliefs about your struggles? What are your beliefs about the world and what we witness? Do you have a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you believe that he wants good for you, right? Core values. Core, a core value is what we assign importance to. So everyone has their own set of core values, right? And, you know, it's, for example, honesty is a core value. I value honesty, right? I'm living authentically. Charity, someone's core value might be charity, right? That, no, I value giving back. That's a core value. Now the key is now do we see do we see our actions reflect those core values? A lot of people are so disconnected from their core values. And so when it comes to like how they carry themselves in the world, they go up when the people praise them, they go down when the people don't praise them or criticize them, right? They're super happy when someone lifts them up, they're super destroyed when someone brings them down. This is a sign of a disconnect from truth a disconnect from your intentions, a disconnect from Allah's truths, a disconnect from your values. Because what happens when you're so connected to your values? This is my value. I'm not going to change my standards and my values because someone reacted wrongly to it, right? I'm not going to eliminate my value because I didn't get the right reaction. No, you, you stay true to your values. But when you don't know your values, right? Like, then you're going to be like, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> But that was your value all these years. That was your value. That was something you valued about your like in your life that you were somebody who did this. Like it's like someone who gives charity. And then I don't know, for some reason, because of someone's reaction, they decide not to give charity. OK, then that wasn't your value. <laughs> your value is what you see as important for you and how you want to live your life. So what we want is when we're connected to our truths, we want to root ourselves in in staying true to those values. In not being like a yo-yo, we go up and down with the reaction of people. That makes you lose respect for yourself. Back to that quote that I mentioned earlier, right? It's that, you know, you, you, you don't know the tr what's true within you and what's not. <laughs> Is this something I care about? Okay, I care about it today, but I don't care about it tomorrow. No, what do you really care about? <laughs> what do you really value in life? So, and most of the time, you know, when we react negatively to a situation, we're 
most likely, like back to the core belief thing, we're most likely reacting to a belief we have about the situation. I forgot to mention this part, right? So like when you, for example, two people can go through the same situation. One person reacts positively, one person reacts negatively. What's the difference, right? In, in, in psychology, we know through cognitive behavioral therapy and cognitive behavioral theories is that people don't react to the circumstance. People react to the thoughts or beliefs about the circumstance. So two people can go through the same situation, but one has a belief about it that, you know, is, is more constructive, more meaningful, there's value. Another person has a belief about it that it's maybe it's out to harm him, that this is right? It's about how we interpret. So when we, when we react negatively to a situation and like, let's say you have something that you, you have a negative reaction in life to certain things and you, you you realize, oh, this is a pattern here. You know, every time this happens, I react negatively. Every time something similar, I react negatively. Usually that's points you to a belief you have about a situation, right? A belief you have about, um, you know, like, how you like a belief you have about yourself through that experience or a belief you have about Allah through that experience, a belief you have about others through that experience, a belief you have about what you deserve, you know, two people, for example, they see someone getting blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One person is, is happy. Right. And they're like, Oh my God, like I'm, I'm motivated. I, inshallah, I want Allah to give me that. What is their core belief? When I look at that person's blessings, I see the infinite supply that Allah has. I don't see the creation. I see the creator. I remember the belief that it is Allah who gives and who bestows, right? Another person can feel like, oh, people get because of their, of their, what, what, like people like get blessings because of something they have, <laughs> not because Allah gave them. So what happens? They fixate on the person. What does that person have that I don't have? Why did Allah give that person and not me? Creates resentment, anger, right? So our core beliefs matter. And everything about Islam shapes our core beliefs. It shapes our core beliefs about who God is and, you know, and how he views us and why he sends tests, meaning, meaning, meaning constantly from everything that we go through, deriving meaning. And finding our truth is not enough. As we said, we know that we're not the destination, right? So sometimes knowing your truth, I mean, not sometimes, knowing your truth, if we understand that rule that I'm not the destination, it's not enough to say, oh, this is my truth. As a Muslim, we don't stop there. This is another thing I saw in, in Western self-help books, right? It's enough, you know your truth. That's it. That's more than enough. No, for us as Muslims, it's not enough. It's like, this is my truth, okay? I might like this thing in this... But is this truth aligned with Allah? Is Allah happy with this truth? It's not enough. It's not enough to say, this is my truth. I'm just, you know, being my true self. No, it's like, no, is Allah happy with this truth? So there's this thing that I want to do. Is Allah pleased with it? See, that's you making who the destination. Allah, not yourself, right? So knowing ourselves and is not enough. We can't make ourselves destination. There's this redirecting process. There's orienting yourself towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what I do not know. You see what I do not see. You know, and this is why we do istikhara, right? We, we acknowledge that Allah knows, right? The unseen, the seen, we, he knows what we do not know. We understand our limited capacity. And so pausing to ask, you know, crucial questions. Is this thing that I claim is my truth? Is it pointing me to Allah? Because something can be true to you. And it can be, okay, yeah, you like, you know, doing this one thing, right? Okay, that can be your truth, but is that helping you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Is this truth pointing, you know, it helping your heart? Is it, is it, or is it inflating your ego, you know? What is it doing for you? And then it's not enough, of course, to know and align ourselves with truth. We have to live by them. You know your core beliefs. You know your core values. Okay, but now it's a, how am I living by them? And the thing that we, we and, I'll, and I'll stop after this, is that, you know, it's so empowering when the way you live your life becomes about your living truthfully because you take your power back. 
like I said, you don't necessarily, you, you take your power back from other people to tell you what you, you know, what is important for you, right? You take your power back from giving other people the power to dictate for you, you know, what is good for you, what is not, right? You are constantly making Allah the destination. You're constantly, yes, you, you, you practice shura, you practice seeking counsel, you practice, you know what I mean? Like we are, we are creatures of, you know, Allah put us in communities. Allah, there is that process of asking for advice that we have, right? But at the end of the day, you're not, again, that whole like yo-yo effect, right? You're not so shaken, you know, by people, people's disapproval, by people's lack of acceptance of you, by people saying, oh, you did this. You know, you did it for Allah. If you're connected to the truth, you're going to be like, no, I know I did it for Allah, right? Katha billahi shahida. Allah is enough for me as a witness. And so there's just so much benefit we have that we can, we can derive when we take this journey of really reassessing our truths and revisiting the Quran to connect to the truths that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has um, sent to us, right? And, how, and root ourselves in that. So that then our ability to see our life becomes more truthful. Our ability to see what is good for us becomes more truthful. And let's see here. The Rasulullah Wasallam, he said, the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. Although both are good, strive for that which will benefit you. Seek the help of Allah and do not feel help if anything befalls you. Do not say, if only I had done such and such, rather say, God has decreed and whatever he wills, he does. For saying if, you know, this concept of if, if that happens or what if this happens, it opens the door to the deeds of shaitan. And Shaykh ibn al-Qayyim, rahimallah, he said that the one, you know, he, he gives an um, a tafsir of this hadith and he says, the one who has insight into the truth and an awareness of it um, is basically like the, str the stronger believer, right? He associates the strong believer with the one who has the truth, has insight into it, but also lives by it, okay? And I'll end with this quote. This quote plays, you know, played such a crucial like uh, role in my life. And I always, you know, um, reference it. It's unfortunately, it's unknown author. I don't know who, who has said it. I've tried to find out, but but it says maybe the journey isn't so much about becoming anything. Maybe it's about unbecoming everything that isn't really you. So you need, you can be who you were meant to be in the first place. And I always attribute this to fitra, that we were born upon fitra. We were born upon truth. We were born with this innate purity. And this world, we, we go through this world and we acquire layers to ourselves that aren't who we are, that are not in line with our creator, that are not in line with why Allah created us. And so the journey is about unlearning, unpacking, so that we can become who we were meant to be in the first place. I'll stop here and take questions, inshallah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a journey, right? You start with, as I was mentioning earlier, you start reconnecting to the Quran. You start having an intimate, close relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You start, you know, asking him to show you the truth, making da'a to show you the truth, but you start having the sense of prioritization for the truth. So when you read the verses of the Quran and Allah's telling you about his promises, are you connected to that? You know, are we connected to Allah's promises, to the rewards? Are we connected to what Allah has said about what happens when you go through struggles and tests? You know, and then just to live a life where you, you're constantly being turning inward and asking yourself questions, questions like I mentioned, is this true? Is what is the intention behind what I'm doing, right? So it's, it's something that requires practice. It's something that you take whatever step you can and you keep going and you build that muscle of prioritizing truth through connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through assessing your, the meaning, the why behind the actions that you do, your intentions, how the why, you know, the, the why behind your expression, your speaking, your communication, is it truthful? You know, things like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I, there's no order to things. It's just about starting. Everyone's journey is different. Allah reveals might reveal to you, you start here, someone else, they might start there, but you know, it's, everyone is on their own path, but as long as the intention is there, the effort follows, you know, a lot of people, they get overwhelmed because they stay at the beginning of the path saying, Oh my God, I have to do all these things. But the path only reveals itself when you start walking, when you say, I'm going to take this step, I'm going to start having it ignite a connection with the Quran where I'm actually learning, not just reading. No, I'm going to actually connect to the meaning and, and really connect to the beliefs that I claim to believe. Right. And so start there. Right. And you like, you know, regardless, it's always overwhelming when we stand still, when someone starts walking, it becomes less overwhelming. I always learn from about this from hiking or walk or, you know, I go for long walks and sometimes you take a path and you don't see the whole path and you're like, oh man, how long is this going to be? Or, you know, in the beginning you start walking, you don't, you don't ask those questions. You're just like, oh, this is, I'm enjoying it. You enjoy the journey. You enjoy the journey You bet of the, the benefits that you're getting from the walk. And you're not really thinking about, oh, am I there? Am I there yet? Am I there yet? No, you're just enjoying the journey itself. And you're, because you're enjoying what you're getting out of it. And so if we always stand still, of course, it's going to always be overwhelming. Oh my God, look how far I have to go. I have to do this and this and this. Everything I've given you are tools. There are things that you can like, they're means, right? But you have to actually make an intentional decision to like, I'm going to start here. But also remember, Allah is the destination, not you, right? So even in doing it, you need his help. You don't do it alone, right? Any other questions? All right. Jazakum Allah khair. Thank you for coming. And I'll see you guys next week, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.